Richard Nixon as the 37th President of the United States, holding office from 1969 to 1974. He made efforts to communicate with the Chinese government and other Asian allies. Nixon resigned from the presidency due to the Watergate-related scandal. Around the time Nixon was inaugurated, America was in a time of economic upheaval due to inflation and the need to raise money for the Vietnam War. The U.S. government's fiscal deficit widened, and the unemployment rate rose even more. Nixon, particularly, devoted himself to reducing inflation. Direct control of wages and prices was not the initial intention of Nixon. Despite how convenient it can be, leading a nation by controlling wages and prices is not an option. In spite of his efforts, the inflation situation worsened. In the end, in 1971, Nixon froze virtually all wages and prices for 90 days. Within legal limits, he imposed a freeze on price ceiling several more times until 1974. Friedman criticized that President Nixon renounced principles too easily for political purposes. This kind of price control is fundamentally unethical. Replacing the rule of law in the spontaneous collaboration of free men in the market with human control will threaten the foundation of a free society. The measure started to show adverse effects. Companies were reluctant to produce products. Notably, the shortage of food was severe. Besides, when oil companies froze the price of gasoline despite upward pressure on international crude prices, the United States was hit by an acute shortage of gasoline. Because the United States was already heading to an energy crisis before Nixon's inauguration, as the population and industries expanded, the supply of energy was not enough to cover the increasing demand. The United States was importing one-third of the amount of energy it demanded due to a continued decrease in domestic oil production since 1972. The Nixon administration's price control on oil prices worsened the energy issue. To make it worse, there was an outbreak of war between Israel, Egypt, and Syria in 1973. Because the United States supported its ally, Israel, Arab countries in OPEC proclaimed an oil embargo against the United States. When the war ended, the first oil shock hit the United States even harder. Like a pressured spring going back to its original shape, prices in the United States experienced stronger recoil, and the economic condition of its people was aggravated. It was only in the early 1980s when the Federal Reserve finally decided to normalize the base rate by reducing the money supply and rein in inflation. The price control policy may seem successful in the earlier stages. Maybe there is a deeper reasoning, but this could be one of the reasons why price control policy is an attractive measure for politicians. They can utilize the policy and disguise themselves as heroes who protect the people from the evil, price-raising merchants. But if you force the suppliers to sell their goods at a price that is below the market equilibrium price, they will not do business in the market. The products subject to price control eventually suffer short supply. The price, consequently, goes up even more. Principles of Economics How Markets Work Principles of Firm Behavior Principles of Income Distribution and Frontiers of Economics Principles of National Economy How Money and Exchange Rates Work How Economic Fluctuations and Economic Policy Work Translated into six languages and exported to the world The people of the world enjoy economics, 